This is the uh, conclusion. We're at Jesus is Lord Ministries International. This is the conclusion of the, the teaching series that we've been doing on the first and great commandment. And uh, I'm going to move quickly this evening. I'm going to give you a lot of scriptures like we always do on Wednesday night uh, because this, the word of God never returns void. It's going to accomplish that which he sends it forth to accomplish. And you're not going to get my opinion when you come in here. You're going to get the word of God in context and it's gonna, it, it should have a change. So if you're listening, if you got ears to listen, let it get into your heart and just focus on the word. So if you got a Bible out, I'm gonna give you the scriptures, but I don't want you to focus on that. I want you to just write the scriptures down because you're gonna probably get 20 or 25 of them today. But there's a reason for that in this, in this section, in this part tonight. It's because it ties together the past five weeks of this study. And you're going to see that unfold because it's two parts. So before we start, we always want to open in prayer. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to gather. And Lord, we gather to preach the words that Jesus Christ spoke to let the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, move on our hearts and transform us after your likeness, Lord. And we do that in agreement with your word that it will not return void. So we're excited. We expect you to change us tonight. And I just say, Father, I can do nothing without you. Holy Spirit, have your way and, and let this message that you put on my heart Tonight, the conclusion of how to love you with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Let it take a deep-rooted seat on our heart, Lord. And we thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. So we began this part of the teaching series, and, and I'm just going to call it moving forward in Christ. We're commanded to have knowledge of Christ. And I'm going to begin with the tonight in the conclusion with the very question that we looked at when we started this part of the teaching of Jesus Christ. And that question was, what does love the Lord thy God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind, and with all of your strength mean in the Bible? What does that mean? What, what did God want us to do? What, what is he giving us? It's the first commandment. It's the great commandment. We're going to run through that uh, and see in the, in the books. But I'm going to give you some questions tonight to kind of inspire you to go take what you're hearing today and apply it. To go be a doer of the word as is written in the book of James. So what is that? What does that mean? That's the opening question. And how do I do that? Well, moving forward and beginning in this, tonight, in this part of this, in the conclusion, you're going to see that how you do it is by faith and in the Spirit. Those are two components that you're going to need to go do everything else that we're going to look at on the how-tos from now on because everything is by faith and you got to do it in the spirit and we've looked at some of those scriptures before but I want to use those I'm going to run through them quickly to tie in how that is going to work in the future so you're going to get an overall introduction of where we're going at the same time we conclude where we're headed to. And that is a symbolic metaphor that we started in Christ, we're in Christ tonight, we're moving in Christ, we're gonna stay on that long and narrow path and we're not getting off of Christ. He is it. He's the image that we need to be conformed to and we're gonna be steadfast, we're gonna hang on to his coat 
to the hem of his garment and we're going to grab a hold of him and go. And that's what this class is all about, to learn about him. And by learning him, we learn who we are. By faith and in the spirit. So the conclusion or where we're headed to with this part of the study of Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, the Messiah, the Lord of Lords, the Savior, we're going to conclude with a series of questions and a recap of Scripture. Some of them are actually going to be new ones that are added into that to knit this whole thing together. Uh, and we're going to, so we'll have a review and, and lead in with some questions. Now remember, it's important to know that in five weeks, we've looked at what does it mean to love the Lord thy God with all your heart one week. We spent an hour on that, and we didn't even scratch the surface. To love the Lord thy God with all your mind, that was another week. With all your with all your soul, and then with all your mind, and with all your strength, excuse me. This is, remember, Jesus summed up all the law in giving us two to-dos, but we're finding out this should, be, this should be driving us to ask more questions on how do I do that because it seems impossible. Well, I'm going to quote Jesus. I'm going to quote the word. With man, it is impossible. With God, nothing's impossible. Now, why do I say that? Because you got to do it by faith, but in the spirit, with God's help. Otherwise, it's not going to happen. And you're just going to stagnate. You're not going to grow. No growth, to me, in my own heart, means if I'm no further along today than I was yesterday... If I don't hear God's voice clearer, if I don't see the manifested results of the fruit of the Spirit in me, in, the, in me, the Spirit, in me, the fruit, then I consider myself in a backslidden condition and I repent. Weeping and wailing, I repent that. So it's not easy. So let me go back to the very beginning over a, well over a year ago to Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. And God said, let us, God the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, God's Holy Spirit, the triune Godhead, three different persons, three spirits in one. It's a great mystery, but so is this first commandment. Everything else stems off of this, and this we could spend a lifetime studying and dissecting because it's a great mystery. You have to understand what this means, what you have to do, how it looks like, because you're going to not be able to do it on your own. And if you don't even have that foundational uh, understanding like an iceberg you know only 10% is up and 90% under the ocean if you don't even have that minimal amount that you can see as an understanding you're not going to you're not going to be able to let God make you into the creature that he created you to be what he wants you to be when I saw that and I studied that scripture, it's what drives me every day because if I'm not like God, I'm not there yet. And I want to get there. There's a drive in me to, 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 to hear God say, well done, good and faith, good and faithful, what servant? Why am I a servant? Because I have to submit, surrender, and yield myself what I want to do to God. But unless I'm obeying this first commandment and making that effort, it's going to be burdensome. But God said, Jesus said, lay your cares, give your cares to me. And when we do that and we walk in Christ Jesus, we're walking with him in the spirit 
and it's not a burden. In fact, the more that you do this, you have to do this. The only way that you're going to experience joy unspeakable is to do this. The only way you're going to have peace that passes all understanding is to be a doer of this commandment. So let's run through some scriptures real quick. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Created in his image, but we're going to see what the second part of that is. And we see it in, in the next verse, 27, where God created us in his image, but he doesn't say after his likeness. There's a reason for that. The whole Bible talks about that. John, okay, let me back up a minute. Created. You're a creature created by God. Now what happens? You got to be born in the spirit. You were born in the flesh. John chapter 3, verse 3 and 5, Jesus talking to Nicodemus about this very thing. Verse 3, except the man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And we're going to have a whole lot of key words tonight that you need to focus on. So write the scriptures down and just write the key words. Born again, see the kingdom of God. Verse 5, except the man be born of water, that's your key word, and of the Spirit, that's another key word, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. You cannot see the kingdom of God, you cannot enter into the kingdom of God, and now write Luke 17, verse 21 down. Neither shall they say, Lo here, or lo there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. You had to be born again for that to happen. You cannot see the kingdom of God. You cannot enter the kingdom of God because it's not within you if you're not born again. You're blind. There's a veil on your eyes. So you were created to be in the likeness of God, the Godhead, the triune Godhead. Then you had to be born again of water and the Spirit. And we're going to see what water means in a couple minutes. So now that you're born in the Spirit, you have to live and walk in the Spirit. Created by the Spirit of God, God's nature, God is Spirit. You were created by the Spirit. You were born. You needed to be born in the Spirit by water. And now you have to live in the Spirit and walk in the Spirit. Galatians chapter 5, verse 25. If we live in the Spirit... Let us also walk in the Spirit. Two parts to that. Live and walk. Be a doer. Be a doer. Be a doer. How am I going to be a doer? In the Spirit. Get out of the flesh. In the Spirit. So I would say you're going to walk by your flesh, but you're going to walk in the Spirit. Think about that. Romans chapter 6, verse 4. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of God. Key words, raised from the dead by glory of the Father. Even so, we also should walk in newness of life. You got to be... <laughs> <laughs> Got to be a new person. Colossians chapter 2, verse 6 and 7. As ye therefore received Christ Jesus, the Spirit of Christ in your heart, you're born again, the Lord, you should have asked him to lord over your life. 
so walk ye in him rooted and built up in him in what in him who is he the word by his words established in the faith i repeat established mature in the faith key word as ye have been taught you're being taught tonight i'm reinforcing teaching you've already heard i hope abounding with thanksgiving there's another key word thanksgiving Ephesians chapter 5 verse 26 that he might sanctify that Jesus the word might sanctify and cleanse it the church sanctify the church there's a process changed into the same image transformed into his likeness we're going to see those in other scriptures coming up soon with the washing of water there's that word again, water. You have to be born of water and of the Spirit. By the word. There it is. By the word. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. This is all part of the salvation message. And obedience to that first commandment when we get back to Deuteronomy chapter 6 we're gonna see God said and God said do this so that you have a reverent fear of me approach your salvation your sanctification your transformation with fear and trembling that what didn't just happen overnight the whole Bible speaks about this. How, how in creation, in man, in man's creature, and I, I know how, this is a rhetorical question, but how did we, God's creation, ever get to the point where we said, you know what, I don't believe God in Genesis chapter 1 that he wants me to be after his likeness. I'm a new creature already. He created me in Christ. That's a lie of the devil, and it's what has the unbelief stamped on your heart and what's holding you back from moving in the, in the right spirits. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, For we walk, we keep seeing this word walk, that's a key word, by faith, there's another key word, not by sight, or I could see, or I could say this, for we walk by faith, not by our own understanding, or trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding, in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths, it's the end of the verse, and I'll, I'll say, along the way, capital W, your walk with Christ, with the Word, your Savior, your Lord, so that you can be conformed into the likeness of Him. That's where we're supposed to go. Anything less than that is not this gospel. If you believe that that's not supposed to happen in you, I'm sorry, you're going to have to take it up with God and argue that with Him. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory, there's that key word again, of the Lord, are changed, there's another word, are conformed, are transformed, into the same image, from glory to glory even as by the Spirit, key word, of the Lord, key word, as by the Spirit of the Lord. As by the Spirit of the Lord. Luke chapter 4, verse 18 and 19. This is Jesus speaking. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, and he hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance 
to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind. There's that veil, the blind. That's what he's talking about. It's not just your physical blindness. It's your spiritual blindness that you can't see the kingdom of God unless you're reborn again. To set at liberty them that are bruised to, pro to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. That's our great commission. And unless you're walking in the Spirit, by the Spirit, in the Spirit, and moving through the Spirit, because you're submitted, surrendered, and yielded to the Spirit of God, of God, of God, you're not going to have that happen. God can't use you. If you're moving in the flesh, he can't use you. And I've got to be really careful here because I've heard a lot of people talking about, uh, and I had somebody, well, I'm not going to say. There's a lot of people in the body of Christ right now that have their eyes focused not on the light, but on the darkness. They're naming spirits, giving them names. Jesus didn't do that. When he asked the spirit of the man that was possessed, where they came out of him and into the pigs, he asked what the name was, and the spirit said, we are called legion because we are many. He was referred to as legion. He didn't say that that's what his name was. Now here's another version. Uh, another translation says 2 Corinthians 3.18, and I, I like this. Listen to it. And we with unveiled faces, unveiled, and recovering of sight to the blind, with unveiled faces, all reflect the Lord's glory. Are, we're unveiled now. Are being transformed into his likeness with ever increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit, capital S, comes from him. What does that glory look like? It's Christ's anointing, the spirit that you allowed or you asked to come into your heart. If you allow him and you honor and are willing of heart to give him the glory, you can go and be transformed from glory to glory because of his anointing. God help me if I ever say I have an anointing. And if I hear anybody say, when oh, Peter laid hands on that, uh, on that, that man that had uh, spinal meningitis and was going to die in two days and he recovered. He has a powerful anointing. Don't say that, please, because I'm going to rebuke you. I'm going to say, Satan, get behind me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really, I, I, I don't want to say I'm exaggerating. I'm being very firm tonight because the body of Christ has to, they're not going to get what they're asking for right now until they do something. Repent ye for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of God is at hand. That's another word for that. He's already here. He's at hand. And if you're born again, he's within you. That should put the fear of God, the reverent fear of God in all of us. It certainly does me. John chapter 4, verse 24. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. That's a mouthful in one sentence. God is a spirit, and they that worship him, remember, 
an, another word for worship in this context is prayer too. It, it, they're, they're synonyms. It's worshiping God is not just singing to him. This commandment is worshiping him. Praying is worshiping him. For you to pray and ask for something, you, you need to submit to his authority. And at least, even if you're asking something that you uh, th that's not of God, you, you're still acknowledging that you don't have something and you're looking for him to get it. So you, at least you're moving in the right direction. Worship him in what? In spirit. I should sing to him in the spirit. I should pray to him in the spirit. I should do everything unto Jesus Christ in the spirit. And in truth. There's a good there's a good keynote right there because who is the truth? I am the way, the truth, and the life. I need to walk in the life of Christ in the way, in, in him, in the spirit, and in truth. That means I should be walking in the word of God. We're going to see that in Deuteronomy. I should be sleeping in the word. Another word for everything that we're going to recap is meditating in the Word. Dwelling, abiding in Christ, the Word, by His words. Everything is by Jesus Christ, in Jesus Christ, and through Jesus Christ. Everything. That whole, this whole book. If you really, do you want to love this book and not feel it to be a burden when you study it because you're tired? Press into that first and great commandment. Get a hold of that commandment, and you'll, you won't let that book out of your sight. You'll love that book because you're loving God. You're loving Christ, and you're allowing him in his spirit, the Holy Spirit too, to move on you. That's why we pray in the spirit with the word of God, that comes through the Spirit of Christ and the, and the Father's in us. He's, we're praying to the Spirit of the Father in the name of Christ. You could say in His Spirit, with His Spirit, in His name, in the power of the Holy Spirit when we, when we speak those words in belief, not in unbelief. That's a whole nother lesson because you can God can show you something and open your eyes by you kind of cowering down and sheepishly asking him for something. I've had that happen before where it's like, boom, wow, ooh. And then later he tells me, I just needed you to see that, Peter, because you're stuck and you can't go forward. I needed to give you a little booster. <laughs> when I was a baby, I had to go get booster shots you know, the initial dose, and then I needed another one. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. That's John chapter 14, verse 6. So, and God said the word, and the Holy Spirit moved. God created you. He breathed life into you, and you became a living soul. And then you had to be re reborn again. But you're not going to get to the Father except through Christ. He's the gate. Th this is fascinating. This really, you know, God really does everything to get us to, 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 to let him do what he wants to do. Jesus is the doorway to get to the Father. Draw nigh to me, and I will draw nigh to you. I have to draw nigh to the Father, but I can't get to him unless I walk through the door. As I'm walking through the door, there's a gate. The gate is the door. Guess who the gatekeeper is? That's a really phenomenal parable to look at because Jesus is both the door and the gatekeeper. That's a good study. That should help unveil your eyes. He's the door, he's the gatekeeper, and yet he's also the shepherd going ahead of us to lead us. I mean, how, how could we ask for more? 
I need the door. How do I get there? I need the door opened. Wait a minute. There's somebody standing there. I got to talk to the gatekeeper for him to let me in. But it looks like, but I also need the shepherd when I get there to take me to where I, I'm supposed to go. Well, guess what? The door, the gatekeeper, and the shepherd are all the same person. It's the person of Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm getting loud because I've been studying this all day. I, I, I was off today from, from uh, my other job, and I had the opportunity to just get into Christ, and, and, and it excites me. I get excited. That's why I like to teach. So, uh, Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer. That's a key word. Remember, that also is a synonym for worship. And supplication. That's where you're asking him for what you want. With thanksgiving, there's that key word again, thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. God is spirit. Pray in the spirit. There's a reason. There's many of them, but there's a reason to pray in the spirit. Worship God in the spirit. We have to learn. We need our minds renewed by the washing of the water, by the word, the words of God, so that we act like when you were a kid and you went to the doctor and he took that little hammer to check your reflexes in your knee. That, that, that's called a knee-jerk reaction. Our knee-jerk reaction in our walk should be to, be in the, to, to, to stay in the spirit. That's where the battle is. Remember, we don't fight against flesh and blood. It's a spiritual battle. Spiritual battle. I need to use the tools that I have at my disposal. My weapons are not carnal. So I'm not going to do... See, the world says, and the body of Christ has adopted this, I'm just going to say idea. Because I used to do military uh, studying and wargaming on tables to simulate war. I was successful in that natural realm because I studied my enemy. And there, there's a saying, know thy enemy. But there's a Latin saying that says, know thyself. If I know thyself, me, and myself is in Christ, if that's my identity, I'm going to do my battle in the spirit world against the devil and his minions by the Spirit of God, the Spirit of Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, because they dwell, greater is he, the one, three in one that lives in me, than is in the world. I'm not studying my enemy. I need to bloody the enemy's nose in the spirit world by moving in the spirit, in faith, knowing my authority and the power that lives within me. Remember, if you start saying it's your anointing, that's, that's not God telling you to do that. The devil wants you to think that you're going to do this on your own. And if God said what scriptures you heard in Luke, the gospel according to Luke, chapter, chapter 4, verse 18 and 19, remember, we're to continue that mission. Jesus sends us out. He sent the disciples out to, to continue what he started here, but he gave us the helper. He said, wait, wait, you need the helper. Guess who the helper is? The Spirit. Holy Spirit, the power, and God said, let us make man and the Holy Spirit, boom, and happened. You need the Spirit, the full Spirit, the full Godhead, to be a partaker of God's divine character, his nature, rather. 
if you look at Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 and then go to Matthew chapter 6 verses 9 to 13, Jesus answers a question from his disciples, his students. How do we pray, Lord? Teach us how to pray. He he's giving him the he gave him the model and the model emulates what Paul by the spirit of God I repeat, by the Spirit of God, wrote, penned. God wrote it. Paul penned it. He was the vessel that was God could use to pick up the pen because he heard his voice and write what God said. God wrote it. Paul just penned it. He was a vessel for the Master's use. What he said in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. Now, so some of the questions, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus got asked that. Listen to the questions. Which is the great commandment in the law? That's the question that Jesus gets answered in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 22. He's responding in verses 34 to 40. He's asked, which is the great commandment? In the gospel according to Mark in chapter 12 through verses 28 to 34, in this exchange, Jesus is asked, which is the first commandment of all? Which is the great commandment in Matthew? Which is the first commandment in Mark? Why is this the first commandment of all? That's a rhetorical question. You don't have to answer it. Don't think about it. You're going to get the knee-jerk reaction out of, the, out of God when I read Deuteronomy chapter 6, that God's, word, God's going to answer your question audibly because I'm going to speak it and you're going to get it. The third question, the third gospel, the third synoptic gospel, the gospel of Luke in chapter 10, verses 25 to 29, in that conversation, Jesus is asked the question. It's a different, it's a third question. He's asked, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Which is the great commandment? Which is the first commandment of all, and what shall I do to inherit eternal life? You already got a big clue when I gave you all the key words and all the scriptures that you just heard. You had to be born again, first of all. Remember, without that, you cannot see the kingdom of God. You cannot enter the kingdom of God because you didn't allow the kingdom of God through the Spirit of Jesus Christ to come into your heart. If you're born again, the kingdom of God is within you. So another question in conclusion is, did you know that God is love? Do you have this knowledge? That's my question. Do you have this knowledge? You can find the answer in 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 to 10. Did you know that Jesus Christ and no other is the image of the Father? Whose Father? His Father. God is spirit. God is light. You're children of light, children of the Father. You have the same Father if you've been born again. You've been adopted by Jesus' Father, and He's now your Father. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3. Did you know that you were created in God's image? We already saw that. Genesis chapter 1 verse 27. The reason I'm doing this and throwing these questions out is this is what we've learned over the last four weeks. We've been looking at all these scriptures. So if you're, if you're watching us for the first time, you're going to get the scriptures that will and the conclusion will also summarize for you what you can go learn. Did you know that Jesus Christ said, Follow me? Matthew chapter 4, verse 19. 
this is interesting because when we do what what is what happens when you follow somebody they're walking right don't we have to walk in Christ walk in the spirit that's another way for Jesus to say walk with me and you got to walk in me to do that Matthew chapter 4 verse 19 and he Jesus saith unto them he's talking to Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother you see that in the verse before that Jesus said unto them follow me and I will make you fishers of men now this this is an interesting exchange because and these are some notes that I wrote to myself that just jumped out they're fishermen and they cast the net out so they're not on shore they're in the boat and they're out in the water so Jesus is telling him to follow him that means I believe symbolically he's saying you got to get out of the boat guys I want to make you fishers of people instead of fishers of men and to do that you got to get out of the boat out of the environment you're in now out of your belief system as fishermen of fish and let me teach you how to fish for people there's a there's a deeper revelation in these verses in all of the Bible than what you will first see but unless you're walking and moving and submitted by the Spirit and allowing the Spirit in you, the Spirit, remember the Holy Spirit, Spirit of knowledge, Spirit of understanding, Spirit of judgment, meaning discernment. Those are just three, three names for the Holy Spirit. Unless you have the Holy Spirit in you and you don't, unless you've been baptized in what? In the Spirit. That's the comforter, that's the gift, another gift from God. It's a promise. Promises can be a gift. God's promises are gifts. That's what we're doing with this is Genesis. It, we're looking at God's promises, his covenant. Why that by these, his promises, by his covenant, ye might be partakers of the divine nature. That's 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 4. And if you do that, if you can become a partaker of of God's divine nature you've actually allowed God to fulfill in you what he created you for in the first place so I am I'm asking all these questions in the hope that in faith Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 now now preach the acceptable year of the Lord Lord means day I'm going to take that tonight and I'm going to say now. Now is the acceptable day of the Lord. Now, by faith in hope, hope and faith, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You walk in the Spirit, not by sight. Walk by faith, not by sight. The only way that you can walk by faith and not by sight is you have to apprehend that level of faith to want to do that by that by faith and you got to do it in the spirit remember we looked at that faith in the spirit so my hope my hope Peter's hope is that you might be inspired after you heard all these words to hunger and thirst after righteousness my faith says that God told me to do this so somebody's gonna get it and God's words not gonna return void and because you got inspired to get hungry and thirsty God's not gonna leave you hanging and he's gonna now fill you up he's gonna try to take you he's gonna give you another key of the kingdom to be a partaker of his divine nature. Seek ye first the kingdom of God 
and his righteousness. Your righteousness is in Christ. Born in the flesh, in sin, reborn in the spirit. This is what you have to do. You got to get hungry and thirsty that by faith you say, I am going to seek the kingdom of God first and his righteousness. If you did that, what would he do? I'm going to give you the answer. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Hunger and thirst after that, your soul becomes restored by the righteousness of Christ. You can also, it can also be, remember, another word for your soul is your life. You can rest in that too. The, 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 the scriptures before that are leading up to that point, but that's the one that, uh, you know, I'm, 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 I've got a quiver full of arrows tonight, and I'm just firing them out there. And I'm letting the Holy Spirit take it because he's the one that gave me the message. So did you know that Jesus of Nazareth, the Christ, the Son of the living God, loved his Father? I'm going to tell you this. Jesus loved the Father with all his heart, with all his soul, with all his mind, and with all his strength. How do I know that? God said, John chapter 15, verse 9 and 10. See Genesis, and here, <laughs> this, is, this is kind of a, uh, um, I'm going to use a, a, a term in the world. I'm exaggerating for effect because probably the probability of you doing this is, is, is not going to be likely. Look at John chapter 15, verse 9 and 10 first. In that context, what Jesus says, and then how else do I know that? See Genesis, the first book in the Bible, chapter 1, the first chapter, verse 1, the first Bible, the first verse, and then get to Revelation chapter 22, the last chapter in the Bible, verse 21 the last verse, and you will see, you, you, you should see it before that if you ask God to help you. God, I can't do this on my own. Jesus, you said, you're the way, the truth, and the life, and you said, without me, meaning you, I can't do anything. I believe that. I don't want to go do this on my own. Did you know that the same Jesus It's like a riddle, this rhetorical question. Did you know this same Jesus, the same was in the beginning with God, John chapter 1, verse 2, loved his neighbor as himself? And I'm going to give you a reference. Matthew chapter 1, verse 1, through John chapter 21, verse 25, the four Gospels. They're all about him. You'll see he loved everybody that he came into contact with. Why did he get into uh, the, um, <clears throat> the, the, the I'll, well, I'll just call it the woe verses. You can look at that like Jesus is arguing with the Pharisees, the religious leaders, and he's yelling at them. He's doing everything that he can to get them to open their eyes. Remember what God, what he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. He hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to what? To preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind. They're blind. Their eyes are blinded by their hardened hearts. God would want all of us to come to repentance. Did you know that the love of Christ, this love that we're supposed to mirror, that he had, that he loved his father, 
our Father with all of his heart, all of his soul, all of his mind, and all of your strength? Did you know that that, that love passes the knowledge that we need to gain of him? We're commanded to know Jesus, and yet God says, if you get the love of Christ, that passes knowledge. That's a mystery to me. That same spirit of Jesus Christ, if you were born again, dwells, lives in your spirit, in your heart. That is a mystery because Jesus brought the spirit of the Father in. He's one with the Father. And if you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, you have to understand this. Think of it this way. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We, we, we look at Mary. She was a human being, not God. And yet the Spirit of God, the fullness of God, was in her by the Spirit to birth God in the flesh. And yet you, in your fleshly body, have that same fullness in you if you get if you ask Jesus to come into your heart if you said I believe who you are Jesus I believe it in my heart and I confess it with my mouth that God the Father raised you from the dead in three days you know why you gotta believe that because he's gonna raise you out of the dead life that you live in sin spiritual death that's that's something that you need to understand Everything that Jesus did, he did for you, and everything that he did mirrors is what we have to do back from him. You know, I, I wanted to be a lawyer, and I went to college in a pre-law program at first. There's a Latin saying, quid pro quo. It's, it's kind of how business looks. I'm going to give you this, and then the other person is saying, well, if I give that, if I get that, what do you want back? It's equal. Everything that Jesus did, we're commanded to mirror that, to do what he did. We're to pick up his, when he said, pick up your cross and carry it and follow me, he wasn't telling you to pick up your neighbor's cross. Now, sometimes we do that if we're led by the Spirit or, or we, we, we're just giving people and we want to help people. Hopefully, we're not harming them because we could do that sometimes if we're not in God's timing. But when Jesus was crucified on that cross, they took him down. He died. He was buried. He rose again and ascended. That wooden cross that he was nailed up on was still there, even though he ascended. I believe he's trying to get us to pick his cross up now and follow his mission because he tells us to go do what he did and to follow his way. But he gave us the helper to do that. Now, if I'm wrong, God's going to tell me that, but that's how I look at it and, uh, with my walk. So hopefully you're now inspired to seek first the kingdom of God. And I hope that you gave your heart to Christ and the kingdom is within you. And now, what do you have to do? You got to look inwardly into yourself to evaluate yourself against the commandments, the precepts, the laws, the statutes, the judgments and the testimonies of God in you. That's another way to say what Jesus said. Why do you look at the speck of dust in your neighbor when there's a beam in yourself? The beam is not the kingdom of God. That's the tool that he's trying to equip you to apprehend and be a partaker of his divine nature so that you allow him to change. You're not going to allow God to change you if you're looking and judging other people's behavior and God forbid you think you're the one that can go change them. That, that's not, you're doing, you, sooner or later, God's, 
you know, hope, I hope, my hope and my faith is that you'll hear these scriptures when you read them and that you'll realize that I might be in God's way and God always gets what he wants in this. He's working on this person. So oh, I wonder what that's going to look like if he moves me out of the way. Did you ever think, when is God going to answer this prayer? I've been asking this for years, year after year, day after day. I get up and by faith I keep asking him. But you're in his way because he gave you self-will. He has a will. The whole Bible is the will of God. Your self-will needs to line up with his will. And if you're not, you're in God's way. You're not allowing him to do what he wants to do. Coming up next, we are going to look, we're going to start next week, and, and I'm going to make it one week long. Did you hear that, Lord? I know a lot of times you make it two weeks. <laughs> I would like to make it one week long, God. That's my hope so that when I leave on May 5th to go to Africa, I can have a certain amount of this teaching closed, at least in my natural understanding where I want to end it. But I can do nothing without you, so Holy Spirit, I'm going to divert that to you. So we're going to look at what does love your neighbor look like? What does that mean in the Bible? Because then the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Matthew chapter 22, verse 39, Mark 12, 31, Luke 10, 27, and John 15, 12. Look at that. Look at John chapter 15, 12, what Jesus says. But to do that, we really have to go back and revisit what are the attributes of God. What is God's nature? What is God's character? What is God's personality through the image of Christ? How did Jesus deal with people? How did he answer their questions? What, what, what did he do? Well, he used the wisdom of God by the Spirit. So we're going to take a look at the attributes of God again because unless, unless we revisit this and it reinforces it through repetition, remember I said one of the ways that you can do this, this hard thing in your life, is meditating on God's Word, repetition. Just because Brother Pete, Pastor Pete, gives you a scripture one week doesn't mean you're not going to hear it every week. This is the seventh week that's been longer than that. I lost count. I'm going to go out on a limb, a branch, and hopefully my branch is rooted enough in Jesus that I'm not going to snap off when I say this. <laughs> I'm going to go out on a limb, and I'm going to say, 10 weeks now, you've heard, if we live in the Spirit, walk in the Spirit, as ye have received Christ Jesus as Lord so ye walk in him. You've heard that for that many weeks over and over and over again because everything that we've got to from that point forward, the conclusion was a recap of how we built upon that by inspiration of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gives me the messages. He gives me the outline and then he makes me go seek the kingdom of God first and he fills in the details that way in building blocks like Legos snapped together. Precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little. You got to do it that way because in just, in only five weeks, we use that model that God gives us in the Bible that Jesus uses when he teaches the disciples to dissect the first and great commandment. And now I'm going to read to you, we're going to have a reading. Remember, Jesus stepped up. This is, this is a part of, well, we're not at the scripture where, where the Isaiah 61, chapter 61, verse 1 and 2 is where they wanted to throw him off the cliff. But Luke 
chapter 4, verse 18 and 19, which applies to us to go do what Jesus commands us to go do, commands us, make disciples of all the nations, of all the peoples. That's, that's, he's quoting Isaiah 61, verse 1 and 2. And when he says verse 2, that's when they want to throw him off the cliff. That's when he first started his ministry. So let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 6. We talked an awful lot about the spirit in your heart, your heart and your mind, your mind having to be renewed by the washing of the water, by the word. You were born by the washing and the spirit. And now look what God says. And I'm reading this to you now because we looked at the gospel according to Mark, chapter 12. We looked at those verses where Jesus was asked, which is the first commandment of all? And this is what he's quoting. That's why we're going back here. But I want you to hear this. This is important. Deuteronomy, the second law. This is Moses being commanded by God, the Father, by God, by God, to give this commandments, these statutes, to the second generation so that they don't get stuck out in the wilderness for 40 years like the first generation did. That's the context in which this book is happening in, Deuteronomy. That's why it's called the second law. They didn't get it the first time. That generation's going away, and guess who the, is the very next book? Joshua. He's the, Moses is going to die, and Joshua's going to be their leader, and he's the one that's going to go in. The promised land, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven within you. You cannot see it, you cannot enter it until you do what I'm going to read to you right now. And I could say, and God said... Six, starting with verse one. There's somebody here that's hungry and thirsty, so I'm going to give them a second to get to their book. <laughs> now, this is the commandment, and these are the statutes and judgments with the Lord your God has commanded to teach you. Now, Moses is speaking, but God earlier in the previous chapter had said this to Moses. So now it's Moses speaking. That you may observe them in the land which you are crossing over to possess. That you may fear the Lord your God to keep all his statutes and all his commandments which I command you, you and your son and your grandson, all the days of your life, that your days may be prolonged. Therefore hear, O Israel, and be careful to observe it, that it may be well with you, and that you may multiply greatly as the Lord God of your fathers has promised you, a land flowing with milk and honey. Notice the, the wording there, that you may multiply greatly as the Lord promised your fathers, a land of milk and honey. He's not talking about procreation. That might be part of it, but go back and read Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 to 28. And you'll, you'll have a deeper understanding of this. This is what Jesus quotes in, in Matthew. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God. The Lord is one. There's only one Lord. We're going to see that when we get into the attributes of God again. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. That's the commandment. Now, this book... The Old Testament is written in the Hebrew, and the New Testament was written in the Greek, mostly. Okay, some of it was translated from Aramaic in the Old Testament, so let's not become religious lawyers. Remember in, in Mark, Jesus said, with all your heart, 
with all your soul, with all your mind and your strength. If you look up the word soul in the Greek, it in, it, a synonym for that is it, it, part of that's your mind, your body. So Jesus isn't misquoting the Father. This is the translation from from to take it to take the Hebrew and make it equal to in the Greek in the New Testament. It's worded a little different, but it's the same thing. You have to understand that. Verse six. And these words which I command you today preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Remember, year meant day. You're hearing that now. <laughs> and these words, this is the acceptable day of the Lord for you if you're hearing this message. And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes." single eye on Jesus. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. You are a temple of God. That's your house and your gate is your heart. This is a type and shadow of what you're supposed to be doing today. So it shall be when the Lord your God brings you into the land of which he swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give you, now listen to this, to give you beautiful cities which you did not build, houses full of all good things which you did not fill, hewn out wells which you did not dig, vineyards and olive trees which you did not plant when you have eaten and are full. God's promises are available to you, but you got to eat. Jesus said, eat my flesh and drink my blood. The word came, became flesh. This is a lot of the gospel you're, you're seeing right now. There's a lot of talk in the body of Christ about how God's going to redistribute the wealth of the, of the wicked into the kingdom. This scripture is part of that, but it's at the end of what he tells you to do so that he can take you into the promised land. Do, do you get that? Are you beginning to see that? <laughs> Now look what he says, because this has happened in the body of Christ today. Remember and study and meditate everything that you just heard audibly, the word of God spoken by a believer. Then beware, lest you forget the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. The body of Christ has forgotten that. That's why we need to repent. Revival is not going to happen until you have revival in your heart, in your house, the vessel, and that revival is stamped on your doorpost to your house in your heart. You got to have revival in your heart. You sh verse 13, and we'll close here. You shall fear the Lord your God and serve him. You got to be a doer of the word. That's how you serve God. 
Unless you have a reverent fear of God, you're not going to want to do this. You're going to tell me, well, Brother Pete, Pastor Pete, that's in the Old Testament. That doesn't apply to me. And I'm going to say, well, what does God say? Jesus said, I did not come. I did not come to abolish the law. I came to fulfill the law. And we already saw where all of the law, all of it, all the law and the prophets hang on these two to-dos from Jesus. And here it is in the Old Testament. They can't go into the promised land filled with milk and honey that God went ahead of them and prepared all these things for them that they didn't do. They just got to go take it until they do this. And the first generation didn't do it. So ministers, I hope you're ministers of the gospel. Pastors, I hope you're teaching the gospel because God help us if we're not preaching the words of the gospel and we're leaving the, and as under shepherds, we're leaving the flock assigned to us out in the wilderness because of our own unbelief in the Word of God and our lack of knowledge. And you know what God says about knowledge. His people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And God said, and the devil came to steal, kill, and destroy. You're destroyed for lack of knowledge. There's the knowledge you need. You shall not go after other gods, the gods of the people's who are all around you, and those gods are little g's. So what spirits are you studying? Those of the little g gods, or the Father, the Word, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I'm going to go do my battle with those three in my heart, and I'm going to keep in the faith, in the way, so that I have the equipment, the spiritual tools, to fight the warfare in the spirit, and I'm not trying to do it carnally. We'll close on that. Father, we thank you for your word, the truth, for your faithfulness that you do everything that you say that you will do for us, and you even, Lord, take us broken, pick us up and put us in your wheelchair and push the wheelchair for us. For you give us the door the gatekeeper, and the shepherd by the truth that you give us and your word never returns void. So, Father, we stand in agreement with your word and we say from our hearts, from the doorpost in our house, that we believe everything that you say is the truth because it will not return void and the Holy Spirit's going to move on the words that we just heard today, the spoken word of God with the authority and power and the spirit of God and we are not leaving this place the same that we came in. And we thank you, like your word says, to approach you in prayer, supplication, and thanksgiving. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.